So, today, it's opinion time. It's time to look at some of the things that I liked and disliked about the Battlefield Hardline beta, in the form of a feedback sort of information style video. Hopefully, the developers are watching because I think there's some really important stuff in here, and I want to say right now, just before we get into it, that if this video seems a little bit negative, that wasn't the intention. I do really enjoy Battlefield Hardline, but I think there is some things that can be changed and improved based on what we now see in the beta. Of course, I've had the chance to do this for a long time with the Game Changers system, but now that it's out in the public, it plays a little bit differently to what it did in those closed testing environments. So there could be still a few tweaks made and some really big changes as well. So first up, the time to kill is pretty quick much faster than it currently is in Battlefield 4. There are lots of different mechanisms that can contribute to something like this, and some people might be thinking, oh, it's just the netcode or the damage isn't registering properly, and that may be a part of it, but I'll get onto that later. First of all, I wanted to kind of talk about the damage that the weapons deal and some other sort of mechanics as well. So the weapon damage drop-off in Hardline for some weapons at least, is much longer than it was in Battlefield 4. So let's use an example like the M416. In Battlefield 4, the damage drop-off started at 12 meters. So it would do a maximum of 24 damage up to 12 meters. After that, it would start to get less and less down to, I think, 15 damage. I think that was the assault rifle one. But in Battlefield Hardline, that damage drop-off starts at 40 meters, which is a massively huge distance in comparison to 12 meters. Plus, the M416 does 28 max damage in this game, anywhere up to that distance. So, four shots and you're dead inside 40 meters. That's pretty powerful. Plus, the M416 has had a rate of fire boost, and that follows a lot of weapons in Hardline. A lot of them do have a fairly high fire rate. So, you've got Shots that deal more damage, for a longer distance, and a higher rate of fire for a lot of weapons, which means more bullets are coming your way, that seems like the time to kill would be very short in my opinion. But maybe that's how it's been designed. But I think my suggestion would be to make it a little bit more accessible for everyone who's playing the game, is to maybe reduce the damage drop off for some of those more powerful weapons. So, if you are on the receiving end of a stream of bullets, from like the M416 or the M16A3, then you stand more of a chance of actually getting out of the way of them, maybe turning around and firing a few bullets back as well. Oh, and please, Visceral, increase the damn spread on the 416 and the 16A3. They've been the best weapons in the last two Battlefield titles. Give the other weapons a chance to shine. I've noticed a few sound bugs in the game. The Interception SUV, which is the vehicle that has the minigun mounted on the top of it, when you receive damage from that minigun when you're a soldier, a soldier, when you're a player on the battlefield, so just you running about, I get sounds like explosions are hitting me, and then it gets really off-putting when you tally that up with the severe flinching of the player when I get hit. It can be a really, really bad experience. The devs have already stated that this flinching will be reduced for the final release, which is good, but I think it's worth looking into that sound when you get hit with the SUV. It might not... <laughs> it might not sound like a massive problem, but when you're taking damage from something, if it's really loud in your headphones or on the speakers, you might think it's something that's doing a huge amount of damage, and it's just really off-putting for me. Also, the laser trip mines are like silent. <laughs> it's like they've got suppressors on them. When they explode, they don't make an audible sound for you to be able to hear them. The sound is really important though, because the trip mine might have only killed one enemy. What if there's one more behind him? If you didn't hear the explosion, and you miss the kill notification at the bottom of the screen, which can be quite easy to miss depending on the background it's on, then do you think it's really fair that you're then defenceless and someone has caught you out? That audio notification is really, really important with the trip mines, because a lot of the time you've put them there because you're trying to hold a certain area. If one of them goes off and doesn't make a sound, how are you supposed to know that somebody's standing right there? I think that really needs to be looked into. Vehicle damage, something that I actually fail to notice 9 times out of 10, because there isn't a huge indicator as to when I'm taking a massive amount of damage. You do get the sort of red circle on the screen to tell you where you're being shot from, just the same as you get in when you're 
firing as a soldier or when you're playing Battlefield 4, you know the red circle that indicates where you're being shot from. That is still present, but I want to know how much health I've got left. That's a very, very small indicator in the bottom right-hand corner. And if I've taken a lot of damage, it does sort of, sort of trace over it in red, but it's not very visible. And uh, it can make it a little bit difficult for you to know whether you should be getting out of the vehicle or whether you can jump out and repair or whether you should be carrying on or not. I think the buzzing sound in vehicles that Battlefield 4 had was a good system. So when it drops below a certain health level, in fact, it's present in the transport choppers in Hardline. If that sound could be put into the vehicles, like on the ground, I think that would be a good way of doing it. I mean, it doesn't have to be the same buzzer. Maybe it could be something a little bit more relevant. But I think that having an audio cue is much more helpful than just seeing the red flash at the bottom of the screen. Because don't forget, you have blood splatter on your screen as well. So sometimes it's hard to differentiate what's actually going on in the corners of the screen. Especially when you're focusing on what's going on in the middle. And while we're on vehicles, the movement, or well, maybe rather the collision of vehicles and other objects, is something I wanted to talk about. When you come into contact with like a rock, or a fence, or a lamppost, the car kind of judders a little bit, or can come to a complete stop and then jumps forward again. Or when you drive through an already smashed fence and the tiniest part of wood left sticking up from the ground stops your whole car dead. There's nothing more annoying than that, and we know that that happens in Battlefield 4 anyway, and it's kind of disappointing that we can still see it in Hardline. I haven't spoken to the developers the last time I was in San Francisco. They do know how they can fix it. It just means they have to go to every single object on the map and make sure they remove collision once it's been destroyed. And if there's a tiny part of it sticking up, it can sometimes make it difficult to figure out what's actually causing it to stop. So it seems like they know how to fix it, but it may be sort of a, a longer process to get it sorted. And it kind of breaks game modes like Hotwire, because if you're driving around in the fast cars like... I think they're the muscle cars for both t both sides. If you're in the objective car and you just get stopped dead, you're going to be dead in a second because somebody's going to get out their M320 and blow the car up in front of you. So it kind of breaks the game mode a little bit when you can't get through the objects that you would expect to be able to get through. Next, and probably my most important point, and I've kind of left it later on in the video. I've only got a couple more to share anyway. There are a couple of videos circling on YouTube at the moment saying there is still visual recoil in Battlefield Hardline. And having looked at a couple of them, the people that have made them seem to actually have a point. It's really hard for me to tell if it's in there or not though, because it doesn't seem to be as, as prominent as it was in Battlefield 4. But if there is an element of it still in Hardline, then my opinion and my sort of... My guidance maybe would be to try and remove it as quickly as possible. It's not a fair mechanic to inflict upon players. If my reticule is on a player and I'm firing, my bullet should be following the reticle. It causes you to essentially lose bullets as they aren't going where you think they're going and you might end up losing five or six over his shoulder. And when you've got a weapon like the K10 that fires at 1200 rounds a minute, can you really afford to be losing six bullets? I mean, the mag empties pretty quick anyway. Can you afford to lose six bullets over his shoulder just because the sight basically caused you to fire in the wrong direction? Is that really fair? I don't think it is. If it was me, I'd be trying to get rid of the visual recoil as soon as possible. But to be fair, it's nowhere near as prominent as it was in Battlefield 4, and I didn't even notice it to begin with. Just a couple of things to end the video. When you bring up the scoreboard in-game, I don't like the fact that it's got a white background and you can't see behind it properly. There's not a huge amount of opacity to it and because it's got a white overlay, it makes it very difficult to see what's going on behind the scoreboard. I tend to only flash it up once in a while, but if somebody comes around the corner and I don't see them because the overlay obscured them, then that's not a very good thing to really happen. So if there's anything you can do about the scoreboard, like just making it, basically what it is in Battlefield 4, that would be great. And finally, I think that the price of the weapons should be increased. Things like the M416, the K10, uh, the AWM, and weapons like that that are really, really powerful, I think should have a much higher value in the game. I mean, it didn't take me a huge amount of time to unlock the AWM, and I haven't looked back since I've got it, because... I just like it so much more than any of the other rifles, and it was fairly easy for me to obtain. Now, I know the developers have said that 
they are up for changing that depending on how quickly people unlock things. So if you genuinely think you've unlocked something too easily, then the likelihood is that a lot of other people are thinking that as well. If it was me, I'd like to see some of the more powerful weapons cost a lot more in the game. Maybe having that gap between weapons that you start with costing a fairly low amount, and then things that you really, really want to work for. Some of the weapons that really stand out costing a lot more, I think would be a really good choice. But that's about it. Those are some of the things that I really wanted to talk about. I mean, there's plenty of other things that I could have mentioned, but I just didn't think they were as important as what I put in this video. Now, I want you to make sure that in the comments today that you leave as many comments as you can about feedback for the developers. And when I say feedback, don't just swear and curse about something just because you don't like it. Offer a solution to the developer if you've got one, or at least be nice when giving him the feedback. Because if you leave a comment, the likelihood is that the developers are going to see that. I mean, you've seen how much they've changed and how much they interact on social media, so they're going to be looking for as much feedback as they possibly can. So leave whatever you want in the comment section, but just make sure it's constructive. And just try and offer a solution to the problem if you've got one. But that's it. That's the end of the video. Thanks very much for putting up with my man flu voice. You might have noticed that uh, I've got a bit of a block nose and I'm not feeling very good at the moment. Seems that a lot of the Battlefield YouTubers have kind of had a bit of man flu. Maybe it's something that's going around, but I'm not too sure. But, but thank you very much for watching. If you could leave me a rating, that would be fantastic. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.